receive. Hallelujah. This is our confidence. Hallelujah. 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 and the ability of the spirit such that we can legislate for the kingdom here on earth such that we can stand as kingdom ambassadors legislating the counsel of the father on earth as it is in heaven and so God is empowering us with the knowledge the revelation that it takes to stand and represent him the bible says they know not neither do they understand and so the earth is out of course. So God brings us to a point where we understand the counsel of the Spirit. Where we understand His ways. Where we understand His patterns. We understand how heaven operates. We come into a, a, an alignment where our spirits synchronize with the realities of heaven. So that from that standpoint we begin to administer. We legislate under the anointing, the wisdom, the ability of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And we have been examining ancient parts. Trying to examine the mysteries. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, He said, Seek for the ancient parts and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. These are parts that our fathers knew. They understood something that our generation is almost losing. They understood the Holy Spirit. They understood the character and the patterns of the Spirit. And in Exodus chapter 14, Moses was admonished. He said, ensure that you build according to pattern. If you desire that my glory rest upon this tabernacle, then there is a pattern. And Moses was taken to the mountain for 40 days. And he was shown the blue of the heavenly tabernacle and he was vested with the responsibility of replicating that tabernacle and God said if you want me to rest it must be built according to pattern and Exodus chapter 40 tells us that Moses built everything according to pattern and then he said the Shekinah of God the glory and the manifested presence of God came and rested and the Bible says Moses could not even enter nobody could enter 
the visible, tangible cloud of his glory. Fill the place. Hallelujah. When he came to the time of Solomon, the Bible makes us to understand that after dedicating the temple, he said, Oh Lord, whoever prays and faces this temple, hearken to the cry of your people. And the Bible says, when Solomon had made an end to this prayer, then a fire fell upon the sacrifices. And then the glory, that Shekinah again. There are principles that draw the presence of God into the life of a person. There are principles that draw the glory of God into the tabernacle of his people. And it's our job to search. It's our job to press on. It's our job to cry. It's our responsibility as kingdom citizens to seek for this ancient palace and say, Lord, what did Elijah see that gave him territorial authority over the land of Israel such that Ahab said, who is this troublemaker? A single man troubles an entire generation as a result of the revelation of his sin. What did Joshua know that compelled him to speak to the heavenly realm and the celestial body came into obedience because a man in the earth realm spoke until we have knowledge of these principles and these mysteries then we cannot dominate and legislate and stand as ambassadors enforcing the values and the systems of our kingdom hallelujah until we understand these things we will keep being victims to demons and oppressions and all kinds of things but when the light of God comes, then we will arise as a kingdom of people and shine. Shine forth in the glory of the one who died for us. And legislate his counsel across all systems. Then that's, that glorious statement in Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 will become a reality. How that the kingdoms, the systems of this world will become the systems of our God and of we his ambassadors, his Christ, the anointed ones. And so every time you have the opportunity to come for this meeting, I like for your heart to be open. I like for your spirit to be open. Because God will be communicating these things to us. And He said, Rule thou in the midst of your enemies by reason of knowledge. The knowledge, the equipping that the Holy Ghost brings, granting us the ability. Oh, men, men, doing the deeds that only God's and indeed God can do. So, Father, our hearts are open tonight. We trust your leadership and we trust your ability. Reveal mysteries unto us, O Lord, that will cause us to shape this generation. Reveal mysteries to us by your word. We respect your word. We believe your word. Cause our eyes to see and our ears to hear something that will set us ablaze for our generation. In the name of Jesus. Verse 38, 1 Kings. Can we sing one song? I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. It's a very simple song. Your profession of faith. I believe. I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Sing, I believe. I believe. 
fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offerings and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and eat. For there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Now take note of this. Elijah told Ahab, Get up, eat. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. 42. And Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went to the top of the mountain. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And put his face between his knees. And said unto his servant, Go now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. Verse 44. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, see, perceive, understand. There ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up. Say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, and the rain stop thee not. 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, that the heavens was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode, and went to Jezreel. The last verse, 46. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and ran before Ahab, to the entrance of Jezreel. Lord, we believe we are the believing generation. Break the limits of impossibilities. We believe. We believe. Oh Lord, we believe. Lord, we manifestation of a thing it will be prophesied spoken from the realm of the spirit hallelujah and then by the ministry of servants sons kings ambassadors god will find a way of bringing material expression to those things the bible talks about a man called elijah elijah the tishbite hallelujah and the word of god tells us that this was an awesome man a man who understood the presence of God threatened the whole land with the grace and the understanding the intimacy that he had with God and the Bible said at a certain time he stood and made a decree it wasn't published in the TV in the radio but it was registered in the realm of the spirit that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years he never said until at the will of God he said except at my word 
a whole man holds a nation to ransom because of an understanding of mysteries in the spirit hallelujah and then when it was time he went to Ahab after his encounter with Obadiah and he told him gather the prophets of Baal to Mount Carmel and let's settle this once and for all if God be God then let it be proven if Baal be God then let it be proven no more gist and gorilla warfare and he brought all of them and the Bible says they cried to their God from morning till evening and Elijah mocked them he said wake him maybe he's sleeping what gives a man audacity in that kind of fearful contest if I were Elijah I would have been praying and say God please don't disappoint me whatever it is just bring this fire and we'll settle it in the secret place but a man is so confident hmm, of the integrity of God that he can dare the other people and not being afraid that his mockery maybe will not be an expression of love and God will be angry he said cry oh maybe he's sleeping and when it was his time he did something the bible says he said give me 12 stones hmm. let me tell you something brothers and sisters you rule in this realm by the understanding of the operation of the spirit that you know has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender your understanding of the operation of the heavens and your ability to align yourself will make you a god in this realm hallelujah your understanding your understanding that's why the bible says in in isaiah 11 verse 2 it says and you shall be of quick understanding the lord will empower you not just with the energy and the ability of the spirit but the understanding of his principles and then with that understanding you will rule and reign and establish the kingdom of god the Lord is counting on a generation that will cause his glory and his kingdom to be revealed. And he said, this is that generation. We are that prophetic generation that will reveal the life and the glory and the power and the wisdom of God. That's why I raised the song, I believe. Because many times when we sing these songs, we just sing it from our mouth and our lips, but there's nothing that provokes our spirit. To say, Lord, what do I believe? What do I believe? Terrible men who walked in the things of the Spirit. The Bible makes us understand that when Elijah was about to leave, he was discussing with Elisha and he casually parted the Jordan. A miracle that a ministry in our generation will emphasize until the man of God goes to be with the Lord. It was what this ancient called casual miracles. They parted the sea. And the band of prophets were watching. And when Elijah was taken in a chariot, Elisha reproduced the same result. That's to demonstrate to us that it had nothing to do with Elijah. It had everything to do with an understanding of God's system. And it will happen to you and to me when you have that understanding. Tonight I want to share very briefly and then we'll pray. I took us to that scripture to establish something. James chapter 5. God is going to be showing us another mystery that the ancient understood. Our fathers. Thank you Lord. James 5. Verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Jesus. 15. And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that he may be healed. The fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man 
avail it much. Can we read that scripture together? One to read. The fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man avail it much. One more time. Verse 17. Elijah. Now, listen. This is, this is James speaking now. He's referring to the scripture we just read. Because he didn't meet Elijah. He also heard of the testimony of Elijah. And in his days he was annoyed. He was provoked in his spirit. Hallelujah. And when you study church history, friends, the apostles reproduced the results of the kingdom with such accuracy and power. And here James is giving us the mystery behind Elijah's grace and power. And he said, Elijah was a man like us. A man like you and me. Subject to frailty. Subject to being tired. So what made him such a supernatural icon in his time? Here's the secret. Elijah was subject to like passions. He was hungry. He was angry. As a matter of fact, theology tells us Elijah was a very temperous man. Hallelujah. And he prayed earnestly, read on, that it might not rain. And it rained not in the earth by the space of three years and six months. Verse 18. And he what? And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Stop. Look up. It says the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her food. Because a man understood how to legislate things from the earth realm. I want to show us one of the ancient secrets tonight. And I trust that the Lord will grant us grace to pray. Hallelujah. Now many believers do not understand that kingdom legislation first and foremost begins in the realm of the heavens are you following me now that everything a believer does in this earth is only a replica or a reproduction of what has been established in the spirit whatever you try to reproduce here on earth that has no foundation in the realm of the spirit cannot work hallelujah paul gives us a mystery he says the body without the spirit is dead in other words it is the spirit that gives life and substance are you following me that everything we do here on earth everything we execute must have a a spiritual foundation the ancient knew this and that's the reason why they never did things on earth until they were sure it had been established in the heaven it's a secret many believers do not understand. So we launch into life and do whatever we want to do. And the only things that work are the things that have a foundation in the realm of the spirit. It's a mystery that the ancient understood. Hallelujah. And I said, God, what, what gave Elijah such power? He had no mic. Suddenly, an entire nation just found out that there was no rain. And people started finding out, ah, what is happening? And someone said, I know a man who said something, you know. Governmental authority, kingdom legislation that comes by reason of knowledge. The Bible gives us the secret. It says that Elijah was a man just like us. But this guy understood a secret. And the Bible says he prayed what? Endlessly. He prayed earnestly to settle things in the realm of the spirit. And out of the overflow of what had been established in the spirit, all he did was to execute it on earth. Hear me. This is a powerful, timeless secret. That you never attempt to do things in the earth realm until it is first a reality in the spirit. In the book of 2 Kings, he told Ahaz, he said, I already hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Why did he go to pray? He began to perceive that the spirit of God was operating. The time of restoration of the rain had come. And so he went in the realm of the spirit to crystallize it. And the Bible says he began to travel. And he was waiting for the time when the earth and the, the realm of the spirit will synchronize. 
and he said go and check do you see any sign the sign of its manifestation means it's already a reality in the spirit and he kept praying he said go back and check and i'm sure the servant was saying don't waste your time he said no 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 there is a formation in the spirit and i cannot do anything in the earth realm until it is first a reality and the servant came back and said i see a fish he said that's it it's already a reality does it tell ahas run the rain is about to start and the bible says suddenly the cloud started responding to realities that had been in the spirit the cloud suddenly started changing one moment he sees just a feast and then now he sees a dark cloud and the bible says the rain and the hand of the lord came upon him and on barefoot he ran and outran the chariots down to jezreel it's a principle of governmental authority the principle of traveling until things become crystallized in the realm of the spirit we have so many people that just start projects start things and we do not crystallize it in the spirit and so we waste our time struggling on earth this is the secret of ease let me tell you something that as believers we travel we travel until this whatever it is that we desire becomes a reality in the realm of the spirit the proof that is a reality is that you will see a sign in the earth realm because the bible says god made some lights to be for for signs there were certain lights that were particularly created just to show signs so that when you see these appearances then you will understand that certain things have become a reality in the spirit it's an ancient secret that men understood even the kings knew before they would go for war they would say go and send it to the prophet has our victory been established in the spirit yet so that we will not waste our time and then the prophet will inquire and say i have seen it you are winning then you say all right now that we see that it has been established in the heavens what is the strategy that will reproduce what we have seen in the spirit are you following me friends I'm giving you keys that will give you a fearful life of victory here in the earth. We have too many believers that just move around. We do not understand that this earth realm is only a reflection of the things that are happening in the realm of the spirit. And until we come to that realization, that's what it means to be heavenly minded. It means to set our minds on things above. To realize that nothing just happens. What you call a mistake in this realm is a definite operation of things that have been crystallized in the spirit. In Genesis 11, Nimrod had imagined these things in the spirit. The word imagine there is the word Yezah. A powerful dimension of thoughts that becomes a reality in the spirit and the bible says god looked from the spirit god saw that they had finished that power and he knew nothing will stop them and god said let's destroy these people if we don't they will actually build that tower hear me if god didn't scatter them they would have built that tower mm. hallelujah are you getting blessed it's an understanding that we do not know and so in the place of prayer one of the beautiful things about prayer is that we have the opportunity to birth things in the spirit and then what we do is to step out in time and wait for the manifestation to meet us and then we move with it and all you become is a fearful wonder people look at you and say how come what how did you do this thing hallelujah many families embarking on projects we don't establish things in the spirit in our lives in ministry we don't establish things in the spirit there is nothing that will happen in this realm except that which has been finished in the realm of the spirit believe me that's the reason why god is equipping us we see from the life of elijah elijah never took any step until he was sure it was a reality in the realm of the spirit that's the secret to an ever glorious life to do only what is happening in the heavens many times we find ourselves doing many things and out of the many things we do only the things that have bearing in heaven that prosper in this realm so we find out that we are doing many things 
but only the things that are synchronized with the program of heaven find expression in this realm and so this revelation gives us a blueprint to edit our lives so that we first of all crystallize things in the realm of the spirit whatever is crystallized in the realm of the spirit has the potent force and the ability to be executed here in the earth elijah a man of like passions like us but the bible says he prayed endlessly he travailed and that man would not stop now let me say something the bible calls that the prayer of faith are you listening to me for many of us our concept of the prayer of faith has been uh, not exactly correct because we've been taught maybe that the prayer of faith is the kind of prayer you speak once and if it does not happen it means it's not it's not of god and if you attempt to pray it again it's unbelief here is the secret that a man used to change the land the bible says he prayed earnestly do i have anyone with amplified read for us please james chapter 5 let's see what amplified says there anyone with amplified please come god bless you verse 17 and 18 here elijah was a man a human being with a nature such as we have and he prayed earnestly for it not to rain and and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven supplied rain and the land produced its crops okay god bless you he said elijah was a man of like passions a man of like passion just like us with our human frailty but he understood what many people do not understand when god taught me this secret i said i will never do anything in my life in the earth that i have not seen done in the spirit see this is the secret to an ever glorious life so whatever life gives us many options when you take those options you find out which of these have a synchrony and a foundation in the realm of the spirit this is a powerful principle it's a very powerful principle because whatever does not have a bearing in the realm of the spirit will never find manifestation in this realm hallelujah you want to go to a place and you are trusting god to give you favor and you have not established it as a reality in the realm of the spirit and you casually just walk and expect things to happen know ye not that the realm of the spirit is greater than this realm that whatever has been agreed upon see the bible makes us to understand even in the life of job you see this principle it was first and foremost finished in the realm of the spirit and job was casually moving and things started happening he had no idea that what was happening had been finished from the realm of the spirit he said one day the sons of god gathered and satan was in the midst of them and a decision was reached job was quietly moving around and things started happening how many times have situations come into our lives that just shocked us here and there and rather than finding out what is happening in the realm of the spirit we begin to act carnally because everything that happens in this realm is a direct response to realities that are being crystallized in the spirit hallelujah are you following me and so the prayer ministry of a believer it's not just for energizing you know you pray in tongues to energize yourself no but that when you pray according to god's wisdom is one of the tools that he has put to birth realities in the spirit but when you lock up yourself and travail you will birth something as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a son and after you put forth that son there will be a manifestation hear me the bible says from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain uh -uh. i need you to understand the construction of the word why will he say from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but when did we see the lamb being slain yes later in the new testament isaiah already saw this he said unto us a child is born he has seen it in the spirit 
It had become a reality. So nothing could stop it from happening in this realm. I'm teaching you a powerful spiritual principle. That as believers on earth, our job is to execute and legislate only that which is already a reality in the spirit. It's a secret that the ancient understood. That's why prophets were powerful people in Bible days. Because of their supernatural ability to understand what was happening in the heavens. And let me tell you something. Many times when things are happening in the heavens. When it's time to execute it on the earth. Sometimes the laws on the earth at that current time will look like that thing will never happen. But you need to understand the superiority of this realm of the spirit. Suddenly you see things change. A feast of a cloud of rain becomes a whole cloud because it had been settled in the spirit. This realm never dictates for the realm of the spirit. The realm of the spirit births anything you see in this realm, good or bad. So what's our job as kingdom citizens? To stand in the place of prayer and travel until realities be crystallized. Let me tell you, if it is crystallized in the spirit, no demon has the ability to stop you. That's why the Bible says for us all things are possible. We have the job of praying things until they crystallize. And then you walk in this realm. Do you know that witches and wizards understand this principle? And so a man wants to destroy someone in the office. And he doesn't confront the man. What happens? He understands the superiority of the realm of the spirit. And in the night when they are sleeping, he goes to meet someone. And they settle it. They snap the person's picture. Stab knife on it. And then he smiles the next day. He expects a manifestation. Suddenly he sees the boss. That says, ah, my stomach. And he's smiling. He knows it has been finished. A few days later, you hear that the person is dead. How come? The, he said, I see a mystery. Servants are riding on horses. While princes are walking afoot. The men of this world understand the systems of the spirit. And we have so many believers who have no knowledge of the system in which we operate. In. This is kingdom education. Helping us to understand the operation and the patterns of the spirit. And so when you stay in your family and see that things are not working. People say, it's just because you know this government. You know, No, it's not because of this government. I need to dethrone certain things in this realm. And you lock yourself in the house. And suddenly you begin to pray. The moment you pray, as you begin to receive a release, you see that there is a corresponding action. Things begin to shift. Suddenly you say, ah, the boss, I don't know what happened. The boss said I should come to the office. He didn't just say you should come. He's responding to certain things that have been crystallized in the spirit. Listen, if you do not understand this principle, I don't know how you will survive the times to come. Hallelujah. It is God's principle. In the days of Joseph, when he became, um, when, when he was going to become the prime minister, the Bible makes us to understand that a famine was going to come upon Egypt. The whole land, what happened? It was first a reality in the spirit. That reality was quickly communicated to the king. And the king knew. They understood these principles. And so he gathered people. He said, there's trouble. I had a dream. I need an interpreter. And he said, in this dream, I saw seven ears of corn, wheat, lean, and they ate up the fat ones. And then he said, I also saw seven cows, fat cows, and seven lean ones. And Daniel, by revelation, said, we have seen it. God has given us a picture. Famine is coming. It will not be stopped. He said, but here is the strategy. This is the strategy. The seven years represent the years of abundance. He said in this year, sow, till the soil. Gather and save. So that when the seven years of famine comes, and the Bible makes us to understand that it happened exactly like that. How many times do we live our lives on luck and chance? We just allow anything to happen in the realm of the spirit. And all we receive in this realm is an execution of just anything. That's why you hear people say it's just luck. It's just mother nature. Really? Demons are smart enough to know it's not just luck. That everything that happens in this realm 
is an operation. Satan always do, does not want believers to have this knowledge because he knows that when you have this knowledge, you begin to rule. You don't stand up and do things foolishly. Where people say, hey, come on, there's trouble. Say, calm down. I know what the problem is. I truly know what the problem is. Then you begin to legislate from the realm of the spirit. And when everything is finished from the realm of the spirit, you can walk home and tell them, I didn't come to argue. I just came to bring a manifestation of that which has been finished. God gave me a word and said, this family will begin to blossom. And people say, I blossom what? Read the letter. He said, no, the letter is irrelevant. The realm of the spirit is far superior. Let me tell you, if you are carnally minded, you will see different things that attempt to stop the manifestation of the realm of the spirit. And that's how the coming of Jesus will be. No gravity will stop it. Nothing will stop it. Because this realm is far superior. The realm of the spirit is far superior to this realm. If God looks at you from his eyes and says, Mama, you are blessed. No matter what challenges are around you, so long as you align with his word and live by his instructions, the realm of the spirit will shake this realm and push it away until that word manifests. That's why the Bible says the word of God is so powerful. He said it will not return to it void. It's a spiritual force that will bore itself into this realm and scatter and break every law until there is a manifestation. But the Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a manifestation. You're only wasting your time in this realm when you're trying to do things that have not yet become a reality in the realm of the spirit. See, that's the reason why you don't see how, how come those that cause trouble in nations don't come out. They are not the ones on TV. They are not the ones on stage. Yet they are the ones causing the most disaster. It's been an ancient secret because they understand that this realm is just shadows. The real realm is the realm of the spirit. We are too carried away by this realm. So when God says there is a revival, you turn and say, the corruption in Nigeria, where will it start? I mean, where will it stop? I mean, this corruption, you pay something, you have to corner this person. How will God do it? Really? When you become heavenly minded and God shows you how powerful the realm of the spirit is, you know that it will cost a, just a day. That's what the prophet told us. He said, by this time tomorrow, I'll ah, forget. He said, it's something I've seen in the spirit. By this time tomorrow, this famine will be turned to abundance. Say, okay, oh, I'm hearing you. He said, even if God, here yeah, is stupid man, even if God will open the windows of heaven, the last time the windows of heaven was open, manna and quail fell. And here comes a very, very stupid man who is saying, even if God will open the windows of heaven. And the prophet said, you will see, but you will not partake. And guess how it happened? When it was time for it, the, See, God is so wise that he has infinite ways of doing the same thing. It's impossible for a door, to, a door to close at him. He said, I want to be praised and anywhere I will be praised. Even if you don't raise me, I have already prepared a mechanism that can make stones act like men and they will praise me. The wisdom of God. We need to respect the superiority of the realm of the spirit. That's why the Bible says, why we look not at the things that are seen. When you focus on the things that you are seeing, you cannot see what God is doing in the realm of the spirit. So God tells you something is changing in your family. And then you just hear a report and say, well, things are going worse. So. And you say to oh God, you hear. And God says, can't you see? Can you not see that there is a cloud? Your job is to agree with him and say, Lord, I refuse to look at the things that are seen. I may not understand how it's going to happen, but I see that there is a shifting. There is a shifting in the realm of the spirit. And one quiet day, you suddenly see things change. The climatic condition on earth should teach us that lesson. You can see the sun one moment and in less than five minutes, everywhere changes and it starts to rain. Where did they come from? Men like Alexander Doe understood this. And he entered the land. And he was so desolate. And they told him, you claim you are a larger, let rain come. <laughs> and he laughed. He said, oh God, let there be rain. When he said it, the people were laughing because they were looking at the sky. They, they did not understand the plane in the spirit that that man was functioning. And in barely minutes, the cloud changed immediately. My job tonight 
is to convince you that the realm of the spirit is more superior than this realm and that if you can partner with God and refuse to look at the things that are happening it does not cause a fortune for this realm to obey the realm of the spirit once realities are finished in the realm of the spirit the next thing is for you to receive the strategy say after me the strategy the strategy to bring them and that strategy is only revealed in the place of prayer and so as we travel we are first and foremost birthing realities in the spirit all these issues that people cry about okay there are witches and wizards in our village there are this and that they've spoken something about our generation let me tell you those things the strength of satan over your life is ignorance or disobedience to the principles of god you know satan is only as effective in your life to the degree to which you are ignorant of god's ways or disobedient to his principle once there is knowledge and there is obedience satan becomes helpless absolutely helpless that's why we started by singing do you believe do you believe and the word of God gives us a picture of what God has finished concerning your life from the realm of the spirit. Are you following me? When you read Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, it says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, Kenny. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and a hope. God has gone to your future and come back and said i've seen that is glorious you say god how about now god is saying don't be carnally minded align with me and birth this reality into this realm i believe i believe lord i believe lord i believe i believe Oh yes, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe. Years ago, I saw in the realm of the spirit, a generation of men and women standing. I saw it, I didn't look like it then, but it had been a settled issue in the spirit. And I knew nothing would stop it from happening. I saw it in the realm of the spirit. And I saw it in the word of God. The more sure word of prophecy. I saw it. Jesus saw his place in the word. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach good news. As at then he had not bind anybody. He had not done anything much. But he said I've seen it. This is my destiny. This is my heritage. And he began to align himself. The Bible says early in the morning he will go to birth that thing. Ha. I believe. Hey, I, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Kenneth Hagin was giving a story. Papa Hagin was giving a story and said one time he was praying for a woman who had a growth and while he was praying she she wouldn't be healed and he was challenged what was wrong suddenly he was caught up in the spirit and he saw a demon and he told the demon leave this body and after some challenges he left he said the demon left and he said go out of my church all this was happening in the realm of the spirit there were people praying some doing whatever they knew how to do but the real victory was in the realm of the spirit as soon as the demon left he said as soon as he came to this realm he saw people already rejoicing she had been healed realities must be settled in the realm of the spirit if not anything that is happening in this realm is noise see that's the reason why hear me those who are most destructive in this realm they don't care about this realm they are more concerned about the realm of the spirit that's the, the see that's the moment why uh, the reason why if you start obeying god's principles from the heavens you will see a signal in this realm suddenly you find out that things begin to change so when demons come around they want to know your understanding of god's principles that's the degree to which they are threatened when they find out that you are carnally minded they just know that this guy is just a waste of time 
but when they see one who reigns from the heavens that's why they saw all the people the man at gathering he had been moving around with the people the demons had no respect for them the moment they saw one who was operating from heaven they said what is this what is this have you come to destroy us before our time they started revealing to him all the spiritual principles that they expected him to know how did they know if jesus was educated about their being bound they say have you come to destroy us before our time they started talking heavenly things they were talking from the heavens their negotiation was from the heavens they say we deserve not to die because there is an appointed time for us and jesus said yes i respect it it's true but for now go look at demons and principalities they understand how to operate from the heavens hezekiah understood and when in this realm the prophet had received a word and he told him pack up your family you are going to die he said no not so i understand a higher law that can cause this law in the earth to bend there is nothing impossible in this realm until it is impossible in the realm of the spirit I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, and so when you go to the place of prayer they are divine communications how many of you have been surprised that when you go to pray god doesn't even discuss what is happening in this realm it's as if he doesn't care you are saying god i have challenges and god says in the heavens this is what is happening now he said, forget about this nonsense you are seeing on earth once he's settled in the heavens it must respond in this realm that's what happened when i started when it was time for us to start koinonia i took out some time to settle in the spirit and while I was there, the Lord opened my eyes. That was when I saw people. That was when I saw some of these things. I think at the same time, Jamfa was also, you know, all of us were just praying and seeking the Lord. And when we came, that's when he was talking about the venue. We're talking about venues. I had different venues and places. And I just went to the realm of the spirit. And the Lord showed me this venue. Very simple. When I saw it, I knew it was a reality. And so I said, Lord, let it be done. And then God began to tell me. He said, people will be coming from different places. And a time will come, you will pitch a canopy. And I said, Lord, I will move at your word. Hallelujah. Look at the manifestation of his word today. Give him praise. Listen. Once it crystallizes from the realm of the spirit, nothing and no one can stop it. What you see as real as this realm looks is only a shadow compared to the realm of the spirit i don't know how to convince you tonight be heavenly minded never worry about what is happening physically let your concern be what is happening in the heavens what is happening in the heavens i will only cry about a situation when i've seen it in the realm of the spirit that is over then i said don't waste your time it's truly over That's how God wants to use us. He wants to give us the ability to legislate from the realm of the spirit. When you begin to legislate as a spiritual man, you look stupid. That's the reason why prophets are always, they always look like stupid people. When they come out and speak, it doesn't make sense what they are saying. But they are operating from a realm. Hallelujah. The Lord began to show us things about the month of June. How that it was a great month. Several things began to come. For me, I was happy. I knew it was already a reality. Learn to trust the realm of the spirit. It's greater than this realm. If you let your mind to be carried away just by the things you see in this realm, you may not go far. That's the reason why we sing songs like I believe. We are agreeing with God and say, Father, we refuse to regard what we see in this realm. Men call it stupidity, but God calls it faith. That's why God says every time you draw to him, you must believe. God will say, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that I've prepared a glorious life for you? And sometimes you say, yes, God. And the moment you say, yes, be 
because Satan knows that in this realm, carnal people are driven by their five senses. He begins to send things that wrestle the word of God. But the power of prayer. You say, Satan, do your worst. I'm traveling in the spirit. You are absolutely useless in this realm. So long as it's established in the heavens. Then you begin to pray. And while you are praying, things may be going worse. It makes totally no difference. The whole earth was created in seven days. How long will it take God to change your life? The whole earth that you have not visited was created in just seven days. When God birthed it in the spirit, he just started saying, let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. Nothing could stop it. I hope, listen, I hope you know that Satan was on earth when God was saying, let there be. Why didn't he stop it? God created the earth as if Satan does not exist. That's how you can create your world and you can legislate. But it must first be from the heavens. It's got to be from the heavens. Satan has no permission to stop anything about my life. Because I agree with him. When I see it in the word, when I pray, God tells me, this is what I want to do. In the I have never, God is my witness. I have never invited Satan for any meeting between me and God. Totally irrelevant. I have no business for him. All I say is, Lord, what are you doing? God says, in this season, this is what is happening. I'm sending partners from UK. I say, hallelujah. They are coming. I celebrate it in the place of prayer. I'm birthing it. And then they say, ah, they have stopped foreign people from coming in Nigeria from UK. Who cares? Is it not a man that said the law? It wasn't a spirit that said the law. Listen, as you're getting excited, I hope you are getting the revelation. That as believers, we legislate from the realm of the heavens. And so you shut your door and say, I refuse to consider. And as you begin to travel in the spirit, certain victories. And let me tell you something. God designed every human spirit to know when a thing has been crystallized in it. How many of you have done titration? You know when the end point has reached and you start jumping. Although in this realm there are indicators, in the realm of the spirit, your spirit was designed by default to know when there's victory. How many of you wake up some mornings and you are just happy? You don't even know what is happening. And you are happy, you are like, ah, now wow, God, what's happening? There is a victory. The Bible says the king, hear me, hear me. That's why when some of you are under the anointing, you are laughing, you don't even know what you are doing. Because you are caught up out of this realm, you begin to flow at the frequency of the realm of the spirit. So you are attempting to reveal the signals that your spirit is speaking from the realm of the spirit. Men in this realm just see you laughing. But you are already soaring in the heavens. And you are just revealing the realities that you are perceiving. You may not even know what you are doing. Because your spirit is greater than your body. I believe, I believe, oh I don't care what my eyes are saying, Lord I believe, I believe, Lord I believe, I believe, I believe, a normal man like us but this is what he understood and God told him I'm going to stop rain and Elijah said fine when he traveled and he got that note of victory he said yeah oh earth what has been established in the spirit I'm not seeking a meeting I'm not seeking an opinion I'm telling you it's called decree that's how we legislate here on earth we have many talkatives on stage you just come and stand and say, you will be blessed. Who told you? Calm down. Listen, that's the reason why some people prophesy, prophesy, and speak over people and nothing changes. Because they are not revealing what, they, what has been crystallized in the realm of the spirit. So the recipients shout, but there's no corresponding results. 
So when a man comes and says, I want to bless you, what he's doing is he's a window. He's trying to transfer what he has seen in the spirit. Then somebody says, in the name of Jesus, I receive. The, are you seeing the reason why healing by the word of knowledge is so powerful? Because you are simply revealing what has been in the spirit. Laws in the spirit that the ancient understood that gave them victory. When we were preparing for massacre crusade, Acts Manasseh, that's a wonder crusade that till today in that land, the people could not, could not understand. I say this to the glory of God, not to exalt any man. But while we were preparing that crusade, I began to pray because God began to speak to me. And while I was praying, the Lord told me, you are going to massacre. I said, Lord, massacre, what do I know in Abuja and all of this? I mean, I don't know anybody there and I've learned not to argue with God because when God speaks, he speaks from the end. He doesn't speak from the beginning. He first of all goes to the end and then he looks at you and he says, Kenny, come into a glorious life. While you are arguing, God is a finish arguing. If you are ready to obey me, just come. The way God speaks to people is strange because God speaks as if you shouldn't encounter any challenge. Look at what he told Moses. He said, tell the people to move forward. Ah, Red Sea, two million people. I'll not be the one who will die like that. And guess what Moses did? Moses calmed them down. Exodus 14, 14. He just calmed them down. Then he ran to God in chapter in verse 15. How can he calm them in verse 14? Then he went to God and said, Oh yeah, God, they are now calm. What is it? Oh, if you don't talk to me now, talk to me. Two million people will kill me. And God said, Moses, didn't I take you to the burning bush? Why are you acting? He said, What is that rod you have? Let the people move forward. In other words, the Bible makes us to understand that in the book of in the book of Psalms, that by the breath of his nostrils, he parted the sea. So when God was speaking, he had breathed upon that sea. In the realm of the spirit, he had parted. He said, move. <laughs> Moses said, well, to, nation of Israel, be encouraged, I'm back. And I've heard from the Lord. You can imagine how he was sweating. Because they were not filled with the Holy Spirit. So they could not understand. They say, oh, oh God, whatever it is, so we better hear your God before we kill you here. <laughs> and Moses said, move forward. Bible history tells us the sea didn't just part. Because many of us who want to see it part, then we say, hallelujah. No. He says, start moving. Ah, just like God will tell you, start moving. And you are like, God, why will I start moving? He said, the signs follow. They don't go before. They follow. The signs follow. The signs cannot go before you. The signs follow. He says, start moving. And the Bible says that the Red Sea parted in their very eyes. When Egypt saw this, they knew it was a serious matter. And the Bible says that day, God glorified Moses. When Moses was about to go, Joshua was afraid. Joshua said, Toh, now these same wicked people, and I'm now their leader. And God said, be strong. Be full of courage. It's not about Moses. It's a principle. Just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Your first assignment, destroy Jericho. Ha. Ah. The Bible tells us that six chariots can stand on the fence of Jericho. What kind of fearful fence is that? And now God is saying destroy it. The way God speaks, he has so much expectation on you. He just said destroy it. And Joshua was wise. And he went. And the Bible says a captain of the army of the Lord came and gave him a strategy. He said this is already established in the realm of the spirit. This is how you will do it. And all he did was tell the people much. Look at the senselessness in marching. But that's how powerful, that's how God can make a caricature of this realm. As real and material as it looks. He said, go round. While they were going round. Once in seven, six times. On the seventh day, they went round seven times. And God said, at the last time, the healer, raise the highest praise. A shout. What is the relationship between sound and the day? Scientists will try to say a force moved and he pushed it through this velocity. Nonsense. Hallelujah. The superiority of the realm of the spirit. And the Bible makes us to understand that at the seventh time, there was a shout. Hold on. Bible history tells us that the wall did not fall. It sank. It didn't fall. Because even if the fence falls, it will build another fence. Seven chariots on one fence. If it falls, you'll just be like a box. It sank into the ground. 
because you need to understand that what you call the mountains and the ground they are also living things and they hear the sound there's a particular voice they cannot deny the bible says that the mountains skip like lambs who gave them legs they have always had it you just didn't know because science didn't teach us they taught us mr niger <laughs> unfortunately there's more in the realm of the spirit that's the reason why you can stand and speak to inanimate things because they all have ears to hear see you when you are heavenly minded it doesn't make sense are you following me but tonight i want us to pray that in the place of prayer we receive realities and we crystallize them when you crystallize these things in the realm of the spirit i give you a guarantee they will manifest it's been the singular secret that i've held on to nothing will make me lose this secret let me tell you it's the secret to a stressless life your travail is not when you come here your travail is in the secret place if you have not established it in the secret place then you have work to do in the physical but we are going to be praying and we are going to be asking the Lord tonight to grant us a divine revelation and to grant us the ability to settle things from the realm of the spirit so that all we do in this realm is to legislate and act out that which has been a finished work and I give you a guarantee your life will begin to soar your life will begin to soar everything you see in the world is a window into the realm of the spirit and when you see it what you see in this world is more real and is surer than anything your eyes your ears or your senses can perceive rise up on your feet we're going to pray Is there anything? Is there anything? 
to me. We are going to pray now. Listen. We are going to pray. And I want you to confront. Listen. Tonight, you are going to confront any challenge in your life and in your family. Say, I don't care how you look like. Change the prophecy tonight. Change. Change. That's what the word of God says. Change. I compel you by the power of faith. Change. 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 Align with the heavens. Align with the realm of the spirit. That's how kings reign. That's how we look not at the oh, things that are seen, hey. but the oh, things that are unseen. Brando kupa kaya, ya patoli atayata. Over your family, over your family, make decrees, over your family, over your side, make decrees, make decrees. Jacando brehe, over the whole of it. Anything to offer me to 
Elijah was a man of like passion, the same frailty, nothing special. He knew how to release only that which had been a reality. Refuse to look at the scene. Refuse to concentrate on your senses. The realm of the spirit is more potent, more powerful, more real. I'm telling you, everything in this life is subject to the superiority of the heavens oh. hebrews 11 oh. verse 3 by faith through faith we understand that ancient secret our fathers knew and they lived like gods in the earth it's an ancient secret our fathers knew and they lived like gods in the earth the fervent effectual prayer of any righteous man 
can birth anything in the realm of the spirit and reproduce it here on earth hallelujah look at me time is against us but you must get the message tonight it's one thing for you to pray and fall under the anointing and feel fired up but it's another thing to, to take this principle and you will come out as a champion you don't need to be a prophet you only need to be able to see your future in the world the word is the clearest description of the activities that happen in the realm of the spirit and when you see it travel until it be birthed in the realm of the spirit and when it becomes a realm of the, a reality you will see a sign like the feast of a man and when you see that sign go to bed because truly the rain will come and nothing will stop it i don't care what challenge you are having this is the secret the ancient used it the unfortunate thing is many of us do not want to pay the price to travel until a thing be birthed because sometimes it takes a while there are mothers that travel for the salvation of their children for decades they never stopped one day they found out that there was no longer zeal to pray and then the child meandered through one meeting and that was where the holy spirit captured him and he came back home born again the manifestation of that which has been agreed upon Lord we thank you for tonight we give you all the glory we give you all the glory for thine is the kingdom and thine is the power thine is the glory hallelujah because of our time we'll take a few announcements just keep standing Hallelujah.